Good evening. My name is Corinne Turtis, and I will be the commentator. All three readings this Sunday are concerned with faithfulness to God. In the first reading, Moses teaches the people that since God has freed them from slavery in Egypt and settled them in the Promised Land, they are to bring gifts in gratitude to God. This reading prepares us for the Gospel, where Jesus is tempted to worship the devil, but Jesus responds in the words Moses taught his people. You shall worship the Lord your God alone, and him alone shall you serve. We gather this day as sinners, acknowledging our sins and worshiping the one true God. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Celestine. Please stand. Our opening song is number 121, led by the Spirit, number 121. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends in Christ, today we celebrate the first Sunday of Lent, the season of grace, the moment of prayer, the time we are invited and reminded to pray, to fast, and to give alms. Jesus today in the gospel passage experienced temptation. But all the three times he was tempted by the devil, he overcame temptation. He defeated the devil. And so Jesus is giving us ways on which we can overcome temptation. And so before we continue with this mass, let us call to mind our sins, especially the times when we have fallen into temptation let us ask God for pardon and mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May he forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observance of Holy Lent, 
that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ and be worthy and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, The priest shall receive the basket from you and shall set it in front of the altar of the Lord your God. Then you shall declare before the Lord your God, My father was a wandering Armenian who went down to Egypt with a small household and lived there as an alien. But there he became a nation, great, strong, and numerous. When the Egyptians maltreated and oppressed us, imposing hard labor upon us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our fathers, and, heard, and he heard our cry, and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. He brought us out of Egypt with his strong hand and outstretched arm, with terrifying power, with signs and wonders, and bringing us into this country. He gave us this land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore, I have now brought you the first fruits of the products of the soil, which you, O Lord, have given me. And having set them before the Lord your God, you shall bow down in his presence. The word of the Lord. Be with me, Lord, when I am in trouble. Be with me, Lord, when Let 
Lest you dash your foot against a stone You shall tread upon the aspen the viper You shall tread down the lion and the dragon Be with me, Lord When I am in trouble Because he clings to me I will set him on high because he acknowledges my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in distress. I will deliver him in A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, what does scripture say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we preach. For if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, that God raised him up from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart, and so is justified. And one confesses with the mouth, and so is saved. For the scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, and reaching all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Feed with the Holy Spirit, Jesus returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the desert for 40 days to be tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and when they were over, he was hungry. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones, this stone to become bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live on bread alone. Then he took him up and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a single instant. The devil said to him, I shall give to you all this power and glory, for it has been handed over to me, and I may give it to whomever I wish. All this will be yours if you worship me. Jesus said to him in reply, It is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him alone shall you serve. Then he led him to Jerusalem and made him stand on the parapet of the temple and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you, and with their hands they will support you, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him in reply, it, is also, it also says, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he departed from him for a time. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends in Christ, today we begin the first Sunday of Lent. Lent is a period of 40 days that the church has given us to pray, to fast, and to give alms in preparation for Good Friday and Easter Sunday. There is a story that I will share with you. Some of you might have heard this story. Some of you may be hearing it for the first time. There was a man called John Smith. John was a new person in a predominantly Catholic suburban neighborhood in Florida. He was a new person that came to live, he bought a house newly and came to live in that neighborhood. And that neighborhood, as I said, was predominantly Catholic. Everybody goes to church, especially during the season of Lent. So on Ash Wednesday, they all went to church and came back with ashes on their forehead. John, who just came newly into that neighborhood, was not a Catholic. So he had no understanding of what Ash Wednesday is and he did not even go to church on that day. Of course, we know that for us Catholics, during the period of Lent, we abstain from meat on Ash Wednesday and every Friday throughout the period of Lent. So on Ash Wednesday is a day of fast, and then every Friday for the six weeks of Lent, you are to abstain from meat. You can eat fish, you can eat veggies, but not meat, red, white, chicken, anything meat. No burger, nothing like that. So these people, on this Ash Wednesday, they were preparing to have their fish dinner. And then John was busy grilling his steak. And the aroma of the steak was very tempting. So the people went to John and said, John, you are tempting us. You have to stop grilling steak on Ash Wednesday and, of course, on Fridays. But John disregarded whatever they were saying and every Friday, John will be grilling steak. 
And the people became tired, so they went to John and they took him to their parish priest, to their pastor. So when they got to the pastor's house, the pastor came out with the people that brought John, and the pastor said to John, John, you were born a Baptist, you grew a Baptist, you have been a Baptist, but today I am changing you to becoming a Catholic. Stop doing steak on Friday and tempting the people. So John stopped. But next year, John continued. So the people went again when they saw that John was grilling steak. They went to him again, and when they got to the place where John was, they saw John with a bowl of water pouring on the steak, and John was saying, you steak, you were born a cow, you died as a cow, but now I baptize you, you become fish. And John ate his steak. The people laughed at him, and then they went back home. My dear friends in Christ, temptation is one of the most difficult challenges we have as Christians when you are tempted. Not very often do we overcome temptation. Temptation in itself is not a sin, but when you fall into temptation, that is when it becomes a sin. In today's mass, we are presented with the temptation of Jesus. We are told that Jesus was tempted by the devil, and on three occasions, Jesus defeated the devil. So what is that for us as Christians as we continue with our Lenten season? Jesus is letting us know that if he, God, the Son, can be tempted, it means everybody can be tempted. But when you are tempted, the ability to withstand temptation is what makes you a strong Christian. At the beginning of Lent, a lot of us make, you know, some kind of resolutions. I'm not going to eat meat. I'm going to give away cigarettes. I'm going to give away alcohol. I'm going to stop looking at my phone. I'm going to concentrate more on reading. How many of us keep to that, that promise of not falling back into the temptations of the phone, of the meat, or the alcohol, or the cigarette? So Jesus today is giving us a few steps on how we can avoid temptation. One, you have to be alert. Always be alert as a Christian. Temptation must come. No one is above temptation. But be alert to understand when temptation comes. The same way Jesus was alert when the devil came to him and said, turn this stone into bread. Bow down and worship me. Jump from this parapet. So we have to be alert so that we are not taken by surprise. The second way to avoid temptation is to be wise. We need to be wise. The devil is not your friend. The devil may come in various fashions. When I was a little boy, I used to think that the devil is some ugly creature that has horns and a tail. That is my impression or my perception of the devil. But as I grew older, I discovered that the devil is not just an ugly, an ugly creature with horns and tail. The devil can be in anybody. The devil can be in anything. The devil can come as a deceptive spirit. You discover that today in the gospel passage, the devil was quoting the Bible for Jesus. It is written. So the devil can claim to be this angel of light, but only to deceive you. And so today, we need to be wise to identify the devil when he comes to tempt us. Look at the story of Adam and Eve. When the devil came to tempt Eve, he pretended to be a friend. He told Eve that if you eat the forbidden fruit, you're going to be wise. God is lying. But what happened? Eve felt that the devil was her friend and she ate the forbidden apple. And what has happened to us today? The consequences of that sin, we all suffer. So you need to be wise. The devil is not your friend. The third way to avoid the devil is to be disciplined. Be disciplined. 
because you do not have to live by bread alone. Food is essential. We need food for physical growth. We need food for energy. We need food for sustenance. But don't let your hunger for food deceive you. Because sometimes when we are hungry, we can receive from anybody. Sometimes when we are hungry, we can get involved in fraudulent activities. Sometimes when we are hungry, we can even deceive just to get food. But Jesus today says, man does not live on bread alone. So do not, do not let the devil deceive you. Be disciplined and avoid the hunger for unnecessary food. The fourth way we can avoid temptation is to be content, be contented with what you have. Do not go for things too great. Do not bow to the devil. He has nothing to offer. The devil today told Jesus, look at the entire city. If you bow to me, I will give it to you. But the devil forgot that Jesus is the son of God and he is the creator of these things that he wants to give him. Sometimes when we are not contented with what we have, we can easily be deceived. Somebody may come to you promising you so much money, promising you this gift, promising you this house, promising you this toy, promising you that he's going to take you to, to Disneyland or to Hollywood or to New York City or whatever, and then you may be deceived. Be contented with what you have. The fifth way to avoid temptation is to be humble. Give God his due and pray at all times. Do not be proud. Jesus wasn't proud. Jesus wasn't proud. He was humble. You know, when the devil told him to jump down from the, from the mountain and that God would send his angels to guard him, Jesus did not say, let me show to this devil that I am the son of God. Jesus did not allow his position his personality to overtake his thinking. How many of us having the capacity, the power to jump from the mountain would not want to show the devil who we are? If the devil comes to you today and say, jump from the top of St. Anne's Church and the Lord will save you and you know that you have the power to do that, how many of us would not want to show our power? That is the challenge we have in our world today. I do not want to go into the politics of what is happening. Look at the war in Ukraine. Russia invading a sovereign country. Destroying, killing both the innocent, both the military, both women and children, both civilians. All this as a result of pride. You know, Russia wants to claim that they are the Soviet Union. They are a superior power. So they can deal with any lesser nation. And by so doing, they can attempt to arm twist NATO. It's all about pride. It's all about pride. I was just speaking to a friend of mine. I was saying today that what if Russia does not succeed in conquering the people of Ukraine? What is going to happen? That will be the end of Putin, apparently. But we know that some of these things happen as a result of pride. The president of Ukraine is calling for no fly zone. The NATO and America, they are saying no. Of course, the reason is because they do not want to escalate the situation. We do not want a third world war. Especially now that countries have nuclear weapons. It will be devastating. Imagine what happened in 1945 when two atomic bombs were dropped in Japan. What is going to happen if it happens now? So Jesus is inviting us today to be humble. Give God his due. Pray at all times. Because Jesus says, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Even if you know that God can do it, it is better not to tempt God. So my dear friends today, as we continue in this Lenten season, let us, at this time, face more squarely the truth about temptation. Let us put our focus on God and not on the temporal favor 
the temporal pleasure we may get when we fall into temptation. Do not let the devil deceive you. St. Peter would say in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, that we should be calm but vigilant because our enemy, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Stand up to him, strong in faith. When you are strong in faith, you can overcome the devil. When you are strong in faith, you can overcome temptation. St. Paul writes to the Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, he would say, do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. It is what you sow that you shall reap. In this period of Lent, let us come to God asking him for strength. Let us pray that God will help us to overcome temptation, not just in this period of Lent, but all the days of our life. Let us pray not to put God to the test. Let us be wise. Let us be alert. Let us be disciplined. Let us be contented. And let us be humble. Amen. Let us rise and profess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us bring our prayers and petitions to God our Father, trusting that he would receive them. For the church, that during Lent, our love of God and neighbor be renewed and strengthened by fasting, prayer, and almsgiving, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the leaders of nations, that they work for peace with a mutual respect for one another's need, we pray to the Lord. For the people of Ukraine, that they be kept safe from further violence, healed of mental scars, and find all the food and shelter they require, we pray to the Lord. For all those preparing for the sacraments at Easter, that they meet with Archbishop this Sunday, their hearts be filled with the love of God has for them, we pray to the Lord. For Anna Internes Bar and all those experiencing illness, depression, addiction, and chronic pain, that God may give them courage and hope, we pray to the Lord. For those who have recently died, especially Cora Beloy, may our Lord grant them peace. We pray to the Lord. This Mass is being offered for you and the parishioners of St. Anne and for the repose of the soul of Carmen del Rosario. We pray to the Lord. 
for the prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God, our Father, these are the prayers we bring before you. We believe that you will receive them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 665, Hosea, number 665. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth, and the works of human hands. It will become for us our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruits of the vine, and the works of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and my brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right disposition, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings. For with them, we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time. We ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God through Christ our Lord. By abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observers, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worldly the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim.
are indeed holy, O Lord, the Father of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gates to pray by sending down your spirit upon them that they do for, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, he broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more gave thanks. He gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord. And profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give it thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring out to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who are falling asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. Now, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may marry to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Please be everybody. Amen. 
Renobis Agnus Dei Vitolis Peccata Mori Miserere Nobis Agnus Dei Vitolis Peccata Mori Dona Nobis Pace Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are all of us who are invited to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ bring us to life everlasting. Our communion song is number 437, On Eagle's Wings, number 437.
Let us pray. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, we pray, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for a few announcements. Our second collection this Sunday will be for the school's Earthquake Retrofit Fund. Thank you for your generosity. Ashish, you and I take up the collection. Our Lenten Small Faith Communities will begin this week. We invite you to join a group to help you grow in faith and deepen your roots with our community. The Lenten activities include Bible study, book club, chair yoga exercises, Christian silent meditation, Easter choir and orchestra with our new music director, Mr. Randall, knitting, Laudato Si, on the care of the environment, and more. Please visit our sign-up table in the vestibule for more information. During the Fridays of Lent, we'll have Stations of the Cross in our church at 7 p.m. You are invited to join us. Lastly, for Lent, the parish has made available a small spiritual book for you to read and practice on your own. The book is called Christian Meditation, Your Daily Practice. You can find them at our entrances. We say a big thank you to all of you for being present at Mass. We say thank you to our altar servers, Julia, Tegan, and Matthew. Let's give them a big round of applause, please. We say thank you to our musicians and to all of you who are here today. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The Mass is ended. Our closing song is number 444, Blessed Be the Lord, number 444.